When we're ready, we'll get on the way with Carve from Sky Sports News. How tough was it having to call Joe Hart uh, to tell him that he wasn't going to be part of the England squad? Yeah, um, sorry, just before I start, um, I'd just like to pay tribute because um, uh, it's at the forefront of my mind to Ray Wilson and uh, his family um, and also to J. Lloyd Samuel's family. He was a young player at Villa. I was his captain, so um, both tragic events and um, thoughts are with them. Um, so, um, yeah, obviously here now to uh, talk about the squad, which is a... Um, very exciting moment for me as the manager. Uh, in terms of Joe, um, of course, a difficult call. He um, he's played in most of our qualifying matches. Um, has been a big part of England's team in the last few years. Uh, has been a really good, valued member of the squad. Um, but of course, in the end, I've got to look at the performances over the course of the last 18 months with the players' clubs. Um, various things that go in your mind as a manager when you're picking a, a team and picking a squad and uh, in the end the three lads we've picked have been the three best goalkeepers in the league this year, English goalkeepers. Um, so n not a conversation he wanted to have or I wanted to have but they're the calls you have to make as a manager. How did he take the news? Uh, very professionally, um, of course disappointed uh, as was Ryan Bertram when I spoke to him. Uh, you know, both of those two have been involved in the qualifying matches, but but both very professional. Um, and um, yeah, the, the, there's not a lot more you can say at those moments for those players. Hopefully, get the chance to pick up with them um, uh, and and talk to them in a bit more detail at, at a later point. Because I know as a player that disappointment, you it, it's good then to maybe talk it through in a few months' time. Is the door now closed for Joe, or do you think there's a no, absolutely. It, it, I, I've picked players on form, and um, if he's playing well for his club, why why wouldn't we select him? So um, there's no reason that that has to be the end. He's got important career decision this summer, and um, you know we we hope he can resolve that uh, smoothly, and he can be back playing at his very best. What about Jack Wilshire? Uh, how close was he to making your squad? Um, well, he's. Of course, been in our thoughts. We selected him in March, um, but of course, he hasn't played a game for us. Um, we've been really pleased with the way the team played in uh, November and in March in particular. We think we're heading on a, a good pathway. Pleased with the individuals that played within it. Um, and the only midfield player we've added into that is Fabian Delph, who has had an outstanding season with Manchester City as champions. Um, so, you know, Jack, I thought, had a good spell uh, in the lead up to Christmas and just after. I think not not as effective uh, towards the end of the season. Um, and we think the other guys have, have played very well and deserve their place in the squad. Is he a Gareth Southgate type player? Could he fit into the way you want England to play? Um, well, we're very open minded in terms of what we want. You know, we want players who are comfortable on the ball. And of course, he fits in with that. Um, I think at this moment in time, you know, the key for a coach is to make the most of the attributes of the players you have to, to play to the strengths of your best players and then to hide as best as you can the weaknesses of the team. Um, that's the same for every coach. Um, so we feel that athleticism and energy and pace, which is what we had in the last two games, are also key attributes. But we want players to use the ball. We want creativity. Um, in the likes of Lingard, Ali, Loftus-Cheek, Sterling, Rashford, we have a lot of creativity. So, um, you know, we, we want to be able to be flexible as a team and adaptable as a team. Um, and we have a good balance of those types of players in the squad. Uh, and why, why are Joe and Jack not on the standby list? Was that your decision or their decision? No, my decision. Um, I think once you make a call, particularly with senior players, then... Um, then you have to look at the standby list as a, a separate entity and what are the qualities that you're looking for from those people? What are the requirements? You know, the, the likelihood is those guys don't get called into the squad. Having said that, history tells us that maybe one or two do. So there's opportunity for those guys that are on the standby list. Um, each of those scenarios is slightly different. Um, but in the goalkeeping situation in particular, 
very unlikely that the number four becomes the number three, and very unlikely that the number three then is is used in the team. So you've got to have, uh, you know, with Tom, it's a, a lift for him, I think, to be involved in that capacity. He's an outstanding character. He's coming in understanding the role. I think if you've been the number one and then you're asked to fulfil that role, that's a very different challenge. And I think the the best thing for Joe now is to get his future sorted out this summer and focus on um, next season for him. You, you were talking about goalkeepers. Isn't it a huge risk going to the World Cup with three goalkeepers who have so few caps, who don't have any tournament experience, who haven't played in the Champions League before? Mm. Yeah, but they're the best three goalkeepers, English goalkeepers we have in the league. So um, we're not picking young players or inexperienced players because they're young and we're trying to buy ourselves time. We're picking young players because we believe they're the best in their positions for the way that we want to play and the style that we want to play. Um, with the goalkeepers, they've been the best three. Okay, um, maybe it's brave to take players without the number of caps. Um, but I think we've got to give these guys belief. Um, what we've tried to do over the last few months is look um, at younger players, be brave enough to play them. And um, as I say, we, we're picking them not because they're young, but they're the best in their positions. And we know they're not the finished article. We know that we don't have the number of caps or experience that the Germans have, the Brazilians have, the Spanish have. But that's where we are at, at the moment as a, as a, as a country. You know, we've, we pick from 33% of the league. It's quite a unique situation for us as an England squad. Um, but I think there's an excitement about the route we're going. I think we're starting to make a connection back with the fans. Um, we're, we're rebuilding confidence in the team, but that is a, a bit of a process. Um, and we've got to make sure that we continue to improve and, and focus on our performances over the next you know, six to eight weeks. Why did you decide to put uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold in the squad? Um, because he's the next best English fullback in the league. Um, his performances have been excellent. Um, he's shown in games of real pressure uh, the personality and the ability to... Uh, to cope with that and excel with that. Um, he's had an extended run in a team where expectation is high. Pressure is part of what they do. Um, he's playing, uh, well, I, I don't know if he's playing, but he looks like he'll be playing in a Champions League final. Um, and he's also been involved with our junior teams. He's a player I know. I went to America with him uh, two or three years ago with our under-17s. Um, he trained with us last month, no problem. So, um, you know, there are some other younger players that aren't quite ready to be with us, but he's, he's ticked all the, the criteria that we feel we need. And uh, it's a, a great moment for him, really pleased for him. And how close was um, Adam Lalana to making the squad? Yeah, Adam is, um, I mean, I've had, you know, continual dialogue with Adam through the season, you know, really close and uh, personal conversations because it's been a really frustrating season for him. Um, under normal circumstances, given the amount of football he's played, he wouldn't be anywhere near the squad or the standby list. But he's a, a player and a person we have a hell of a lot of time for. Um, and maybe giving him another 10 days, um, he could have, who knows what happens. He, he maybe has a big impact in a Champions League final and we have an issue and um, he, he can be part of what we uh, want to do. Um, the reality of the conversations I've had with him are that I think to find the level of performance on the back of the limited minutes he's had, I mean, he's only started two games this season, um, it's going to be really difficult. History tells us you don't tend to find your level of fitness and rhythm within a major tournament. But I'd like to give him the opportunity of doing that. And he's completely understands that. And I've had a long conversation with Jürgen about that, who, who was also thinks that's the best route to go. So, um, so yeah, ho hoping he gets the opportunity with Liverpool in there. Uh, and we wish them all the best for their final as well. Uh, and just uh, about two players who, who are not in the squad. First of all, John Joe Shelby. Uh, was he ever an option for you? How, how closely have you been watching him? We, we've, uh, I don't know how many hundreds of games Steve Holland and myself have watched this year, but it would be a lot 
live and even more um, uh, downloaded uh, back in our, our sort of coaching room and at home. Um, so we know all of the English players in the league. We know their strengths. We know their weaknesses. Um, we think that um, the players we've picked are ahead of the players we haven't. Was there an ever issue concerning his temperament? Because I know that's something he's been working on and he hasn't been booked this year, as far as I know. No, I think uh, we assess somebody on how they fit into the way we want to play, first and foremost. That has to be the, the opening criteria. In terms of temperament, look, some of our finest players, um, the likes of Gerard, I've seen the likes of, not, not ours, but Vieira, Keane, have more red cards than any people. So we can't just pick players on based on whether they might get a booking or a red card. That that could happen. We we need to try and avoid that in the tournament because that's cost us in the past for sure. Um, but that wouldn't be the primary factor in our selection. We pick on how a player fits into our system, how their style of play fits, how, do they have all the attributes to play in the way we want to play and is their character and personality fit into the group and how we want to be as a group for the month, eight weeks that we're going to be away. So was he in your thinking? Was he an option? I think I've pretty much answered the question. I don't know <laughs> how much more I can go into, really. And the final one, James Milner. Mm. Um, obviously, he's retired from international football. He's been pl playing very well uh, mm. for Liverpool. Was there any contact between <coughs> you and him of trying to get him to change his mind? Oh, the, the clue is in the question in that he's retired from international football. Um, he's had an outstanding season. There's no question about that. Um, he's a character I really like. I played against him when he was a 17-year-old at Leeds. I tried to sign him when he was a little bit out of favour at Newcastle when I was at Middlesbrough. They didn't want to do it. Um, I spoke to him when I first took the job to just check whether he, he was sure about international retirement, um, and he assured me he was. I've not seen any suggestion that there's any interest in, in going back to play for England. Um, and I go back to, we've been heading in a certain direction. I think uh, I can remember at least one previous England manager who started to get people out of retirement when they got to the tournament. And I, I don't think that was roundly received as being a good idea. Um, and we believe in the players we've got. So James, I think, is a super player. And if he was available, I'm sure we'd have been considering him. But. To our, in, to our mind, he isn't. We haven't had him with us this far, and we're really pleased with the squad we've picked. OK, we'll move on to squad that England should effectively write off any expectation of England going to the latter stages of this tournament and use, and use Russia 2018 as an opportunity to blood youngsters with a view to two years from now, four years on, when we have, we have a real chance. Is that how you see it? I don't think when you play or you're involved with England, you can ever write any game off or any tournament. Um, that, that wouldn't be acceptable. Um, we, we know that usually teams that win tournaments have a lot more caps than we do, have more experience of semi-finals, finals. That tends to be the process that they go through. That's what we've talked about with our younger teams, that they need to be competing regularly, semi-finals, finals, being in and around it as under-17s play again tonight in another European semi-final. So that's where we want to head. That's what Germany have done over a number of years. That's what Spain have done. That's what the likes of Brazil and Argentina have done in youth tournaments, in senior tournaments. Um, so this group, we don't really know. You know, we, we have great faith in them. Um, we know that they lack a bit of big match experience, but how are they going to get that? The only way is to, is to put them into that environment. We think they're the best players we have available. We think they can be very exciting now, and we think they can be even more exciting in the future. But I've, I don't want to limit what they think is possible either, because they're young and they're hungry and they, they want to have a go at things. And I think, that's, I think that's what we've got to do in this tournament, is really enjoy the ride, um, be positive with them in the way we want to play, uh, and embrace the tournament. It's a youthful squad, obviously, but were you tempted to go even further? I mean, there was talk of perhaps Sessegnon, for example. Were, were you, mm. Did you toy with that idea? Well, again, we, of course, know all of these young players, Sessegnon, uh, Sancho, Foden, uh, Mason Mount. There are some super young players coming through. Uh, but again, you know, the hurdles to overcome to really be in that position. Um, I'm, somebody like Trent, 
and Ruben. You know, for me, they've fulfilled lots of uh, lots of those steps. They're, they're playing regular Premier League. They're playing in big matches. They're performing well. They've been in and around our squad. The other guy is to allow them to succeed um, and for their own development is just as important as it is for us as a team. And I don't think we'd be helping their own development. And I don't think at the moment they're better than the players we've got. Um, but that could happen, you know, in the next six months, 12 months, 18 months, depending on their individual pathways. Gareth, how much did you have in your mind that you wanted to pick a squad that was largely untainted by uh, previous tournament failures? Um, I, I don't think it was essential. Um, I think it, it can be of benefit. Um, you know, we talk a lot about experience, but if experience isn't a good one, then that can damage people's thinking. Um, sometimes the bad experience can be one that you suddenly realise, actually, what is there to lose? That's probably where I am in my life. So uh, that then I think can be a positive because you, you're free then of the shackles of what you want to do. Um, so I think what is healthy is that um, as I travel around the country, people are encouraged, they like what we're, where we're heading with the younger players. They see what the younger players are capable of. Um, I think the public recognise where we're at. They recognise that to give this team a bit of space would be good. That's not me looking to buy time because whoever sits in this chair in, in six months, two years, I think it's the right thing for England. So uh, allowing these players to grow and fulfil their potential is really important. You say you're at the time of your life where you, you want to make these kind of decisions. That, are you saying in a way this is a bit of a gamble, this, this squad you've put together? I, I don't see it as a gamble. Um, and I don't think... Um, being free of inhibition is gambling. I think it's being fearless in how we want to play. It's being uh, brave enough to put people in and not look at them and think, well, he's the best player, but he's young. And so maybe we should pick a lesser player who's just a bit more experienced because, you know, you can make excuses at times for not putting young people in. Um, accepting that they'll make mistakes, accepting that uh, players will make mistakes because of the way we're asking them to play. Um, but that's, I'll, I'll take responsibility for that because that will be the way I encourage them to do things and um, important for me to allow them to go and perform. How much have you looked back at the, the recent tournament failures uh, and clearly the team underperforming, which everyone accepts? Have you addressed what the reason for that has been in tournament terms and, and what are you going to do about it? I think that's been... Uh, different in each tournament you know sometimes we've had players that have won everything at domestic level who have gone out because of poor discipline in a game or a penalty shootout um, in other tournaments we've not been uh, able to deal with the pressure of being favorites or uh, maybe not had clear uh, identity of play so there's been different reasons for each tournament I think um, so, of course, part of the process for us has been to analyse, since I've been at the FA, to analyse how we improve what we do right the way through the system, um, to learn from the past. We'd be, we'd be foolish not to take that on board. Um, and then to look at the group of players we've got and how we, uh, we make the most of the players that we've got. And, uh, you know, we, we've been through that process thoroughly. Uh, recollections from the past uh, recently via... Uh, Gerard Lampard and Ferdinand mm. about uh, 2010 specifically, talking about club cliques and how that worked against the team environment. Mm. Is that something you're conscious of? Is that something that exists in this squad? Mm. Didn't, didn't happen in 96 when we got to a semi-final. Um, best performance in the last 25 years. Certainly wasn't an issue. Um, I started to see it a little bit towards the end of my time with England and clearly from what those guys are saying that became an issue uh, for them so I think that would be a watch out um, if we felt that but I don't I don't see that with this group um, these lads most of them have grown up playing together in the junior teams I don't think at the moment we have that intense club rivalry between two clubs that has existed in the past maybe that could become the case in the next few years as, as certain teams start to dominate and grow but it isn't there at the moment 
where at meal times they all sit with each other, they mix in different clubs. There's obviously one or two that are closer to each other than than they are to the others. You know, you, you rarely see Jesse and Marcus without them holding hands or doing something, you know, so. Um, but um, they get on, you know, so that's a good start point. Actually, at times I think they get on too well. You know, the next stage as a team is that that they get on that well, that they can start to pull each other raise standards of how we train, get hold of each other on the pitch. Um, so just getting on isn't enough. We've got to go deeper than that. Um, but we're working through that process and, um, um, you know, they're, they're receptive to everything we're doing. Gareth, how, how tough did you find the task of having to give the likes of Jack and Joe the bad news? And how do you feel now? You're so close in yourself. Are you, are you, are you tense? Are you excited? How are you, how are you feeling? Well, it's always uh, to deliver bad news to anybody is uh, is not a pleasant process. And uh, I think if you speak to any manager, I was at the LMA dinner the other night speaking to a couple of managers, you know, for all of them, naming a team and leaving players out of the team is one of the biggest challenges they face because there's no good way and satisfactory way for the recipient of that news. There'll always be something they, they're unhappy about. I've been a player and I know how that felt. But when I looked back, given time, it was always, OK, the manager had the decency to speak to me. Um, it was done in a respectful, as respectful a way as possible. But I accept, of course, there's going to be disappointment and um, their view of how it might have been done differently. Um, in terms of how I feel, I'm looking forward to the, to the summer. Um, it's a great honour to lead my country into a, a World Cup one of very few people to have been able to do it as a player, one of very few people to be able to do it as a manager. And um, that's to be embraced. And I'm looking forward to leading everybody into a, uh, an exciting tournament. Gareth, you've talked about having a conversation with Jurgen Klopp about Adam Lallana. What was your conversation with Jurgen Klopp about Trent Alexander-Arnold? Was he excited about him going or was he a little cautious? No, he was... Uh, I mean, we've we've spoken a lot through the season about how his players developing, as I as I do with all of the uh, all of the managers. Um, I said to him that I knew they were going away yesterday, so a good opportunity for him to break the news. I said, "You can give the good news; I'll just do all the bad, horrible phone calls." So, but it's nice. I think sometimes I've done that with a few managers. If we're calling somebody up for the first time, it's nice for them to be able to tell their players because. As a manager, you do generally deal with a lot of not so nice conversations. Um, and when you can deliver news like that, then I think it's a special moment. So for Trent in particular, I, I wasn't able to contact all of the players before yesterday uh, that were in the squad. But I think with it being his first call up, it was nice to get that personally from his manager rather than he just read about it or got a text or a, an email from us. So, Did yeah. you get any feedback about the reaction, how that announcement went? I, I've read bits today when the guys forwarded me the sort of clippings but um, yeah so it's lovely uh, as I say I think for his family of course and uh, for his football club as well it's a, a special moment. We've seen a lot of English players progress under Pep Guardiola I know you've been consulting with him closely how much is he improving English players in this game how much impact is he having on your team and how much are you conversing with one another because you do seem to have quite a close relationship. I think he, uh, I think he's, he's in danger of having an impact on English football. Um, I said to him that um, I think he'd already had that at Barcelona. Uh, and why? Because uh, when the Champions League was on terrestrial television, um, so more people were watching it, um, that team, who, who coaches our youngest players? It's, it's dads, it's parents run junior football teams. So the impact of seeing that team five, seven years ago was enormous on dads, on football people. So when I watch kids football now, um, when, it, when, it can, when they can get on the pitches, when it's not flooded and frozen, um, I see them playing out from the back, I see them encouraged. I don't see coaches on the side with their hands in their heads saying get it forward get it out of there and and I think that's been an impact of his team with Iniesta and Xavi and and those types um, that coupled with 
us going to smaller sized pitches and smaller smaller games and I think all of that is helping football at our you know youngest possible age groups now he's having an impact in terms of the way his team have played in a manner that I think has been different to anything else we've seen at the the top end of the game so he's a, he's um, he's been an innovator and um we don't get, I always talk about us being on the island, we don't get off the island too often, so it's great that we've had coaches come onto the island and help us. Against the Netherlands, you went for a two pronged attack with Sterling alongside Rashford. There's always the fear with the England games that early, early we're a bit pensive and we don't go on the front foot. Are you likely to experiment with Kane and Sterling in that combination? I think there's um, lots of possibilities uh, in our attacking players. We've obviously. Um, normally you'd probably take two players for every position we've probably um, gone with the defender less to take an additional forward because I think those options are important um, and um, you know during a tournament we might lose a player to yellow cards or injury and, and so I'd rather have the, the extra players as, as forward players um, so yeah we, we, we can adapt the profile of the all of the forward and forward thinking players within that team depending on the circumstances of the game and there's there's a huge amount of talent within that group you haven't named a captain yet can you explain to us why and when we may hear it um just because i think um we've been through a process of developing leaders within the group players taking more responsibility um trying to get more voices within meetings within the, the, the uh, uh, within the team, uh, allowing people the space to grow really, and not feel that it's the captain's responsibility to speak first, or he's the only one that can make decisions. Um, so probably when we get the players together, we'll we'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Um, but uh, again, for me, it's more important that we have more leaders when we've been successful the team in 96 there were six or seven captains of their club and um that that created a, a very strong environment and a strong culture around the team time frame well they meet on sunday so we might we might discuss it then but yeah we'll do it before the first game okay guys we'll we'll end it there thank you very much